Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. Today we will be undertaking the topic of fuel oil service and supply system. That is how the fuel oil is supplied through the adequate circuit to the ship's main engine for running. Now as the topic is about the fuel oil supply and service system, so what we have ensured is to undertake only the elements after the heavy oil that is the fuel oil has reached the service tank itself. So any elements before that would either come into the transfer system or the purification system accordingly. Now let us see. Once the heavy oil has adequately and by heavy oil as per the present conditions, I mean the VLSFO that is the 0.5 sulfur limit oil. As the VLSFO has reached the service tank, now it is ready to be supplied into the main circuit for running the engine. So in order to supply this VLSFO further, what we have to ensure is to pressurize the fluid and supply it at pressure before reaching the fuel pump itself. So we use adequate pumps. Now, these pumps can be distributed into two sets depending upon the pressure ranges and the positions that they are located in. So the first will be the supply pump and the second will be the circulating pump. The supply pump is the set of pumps that is operating on the lower pressure region and the circulating pump would be on the higher region. The main idea behind the supply pump is to first of all pick the oil from the service tank itself and thereby put it further into the circuit in a pressure range of 2.5 to 4.5 bar depending upon the arrangement within the engine group. Before taking the suction, the supply pump would individually have a set of filters that is liable to make sure that the sludge or any other components drawn from the service tank do not reach the pump therefore not damaging the pump in any way. These filters are generally of duplex type filter nature and are in the cold side of the circuit which I will explain later why I am regarding it as the cold side. So these are duplex filters that are manually cleaned and checked on routine basis that is the engine room rounds or on the daily round basis to make sure that the differential pressure across the pump is not too high and the pump is building up the right supply pressure. Now once the oil has passed through the supply pump and is now at a pressure of say 4, 4.5 bar and is now in the circuit, it reaches the first set of main filters that is responsible for filtering and preparing the oil to put it into adequate condition to be usable in the engine finally. This set of filter is regarded as the cold filter unit. Now first let us discuss why it is regarded as such. Now we can see that in the circuit itself there are different kinds of elements. So before we go further let us highlight every element individually. In addition to the previously highlighted elements the supply and circulating pump we can also see that we have a buffer tank, a set of heaters, a viscotherm, another set of filter before finally the fuel oil reaches into the engine and additional elements such as the quick closing valve adjacent to the service tank, the relief valve and the air release and air venting mechanism on the buffer tank, the metering unit and the pressure control valve and the viscotherm sensing and control unit to regulate the flow of steam into the heaters. So that we are aware of each component, what we know is that anything before the heater that is the heater which is present in the circuit, anything before that that is before the heater inlet side the temperature of the fuel would be lesser in comparison and that is why that part of the circuit is regarded as the cold side whereas the part after that is the post heater condition would be regarded as the hot part of the circuit. Now just because we are regarding it as the cold part does not necessarily mean that the temperature is low. As we all know that the VLSFO also after purification is being stored in the service tanks usually up and upwards of the temperature of 80 degree at least if the viscosity is low and in general it would be above 90 degrees. So it is relatively hot and therefore any working condition needs adequate safety. But in comparison to the final temperature that is being built up and sent into the circuit it is relatively colder that is why the cold part. So the cold filter that we were talking about before this and once the fuel is filtered through this unit 
it is being sent further through the metering device and then into the buffer tank. Now this metering device would be the flow meter that is accounting for the flow of fuel in the circuit and thereby readings are to be taken periodically. What is important is to know that the micron size of this filter that is the cold side filter would be more than the final filter in the line that is that means it is a relatively coarser filled. So as you can see this filter can either be of a backwash type or a simple duplex filter type with a bypass assembly as has been indicated in the diagram. Now once the fuel moves forward after filtration that is the first filtration level and then goes into the buffer tank. This buffer tank is nothing but again an deaeration assembly or a intermediate storage assembly with a deaeration mechanism that is again meant to remove all the vapor from the fuel line that is being circulated and make sure abundant amount of fuel without any loss of suction at any point of time is available before entering into the circulation side that is the circulating pump suction side to make sure the fuel suction is never lost. Now this vapor buildup can be due to the improper purging of the line on the supply side. It can be due to the flashing of the vapor or the flashing of the fuel in the filter side if the temperature has been too high or any other malpractices such as ingress of air into the system because of incorrect purging or because of incorrect level being maintained in the service tank and incorrect purging procedures being followed for the supply pump after maintenance and as such any more wrong practices. So that is why the buffer tank is in place to intermediately store the fuel, make abundant supply at all points of time to the circulating part of the circuit and to de and remove the vapor and the air buildup that is there in the fuel side that is the supply side so as to avoid any loss of suction in the circulating side. Now the circulating pump picks up this fuel from the buffer tank and builds up further pressure and then supplies it to the heater. Usually the circulating pump would build up a pressure of around 7 to 8 bar before circulating the fuel further into the circuit. This fuel then enters the heaters and then gets heated further. As we can see the heating mechanism is being controlled automatically by a control mechanism. This control mechanism is in turn operated by the next element that is the viscotherm. Depending upon the viscosity readings that we have to set into the fuel side, we have to make sure that the viscosity is maintained as per the fuel reports being obtained by the testing lab that has been sent to us and that particular viscosity is maintained at the injection point of the main engine. So accordingly we will set the viscotherm unit and accordingly the viscotherm unit will control the steam flow through the auto control mechanism into the heaters and thereby maintaining the set temperature of the fuel that is coming from the outlet of the heater. So let us say if I am maintaining a viscosity of 13 CSD then that has to be set on the meter and the viscotherm would accordingly regulate the temperature that is to be maintained across the heater for the fuel. Let's say a temperature of 125 or 130 degrees or a little lesser as per the specification of the fuel. Now once the fuel has left this viscotherm unit and the adequate viscosity was sensed and maintained thereafter it reaches the final set of filter which we regard as the hot filter and this is the finest filter that is available in the line. It can be usually of backwash type or some units use ball filters where the finest filter elements are available. So as to make sure that the fuel that is being finally put into the main engine line that is the manifold towards the inlet side of the fuel and the fuel pump is the properly filtered, properly maintained and adequate quality fuel that is being supplied so as to make sure that no wear down of the fuel pumps or negligible wear down of the fuel pumps, no sludge deposits and other adverse effects occur on the fuel pump and the injector side. It is important to know that all the filters in the fuel line circuit would always have a duplicacy that is at least two of them would exist to make sure that under all conditions at least one set of filter is available even if the other is being cleaned or overhauled. 
or if there is an emergency and there is a sudden drop of pressure. That is why all the filters would exist in duplicate units and the capacity would be the same. That is the exact duplicate. The standby filter would never be smaller or bigger. It would be the exact same. Once this filtration has taken place, then the fuel would finally reach the inlet line and the fuel pump side and then be available at all points of time for fuel injection through the fuel pump and the injector side. And any recirculation or any draining of fuel that is to be taken from the fuel side and vice versa would be then sent back into the return line and then again circulated back to the buffer tank instead of otherwise being sent to the service tank to make sure that again the buffer tank is always in a positive head and the correct pressure is being maintained in the circuit. Now we can also see that the return line would be having a pressure control valve and the adjustment of this pressure control valve is the one which is making sure that the right circulation pressure is also being maintained in the line. Therefore, often if this mechanism goes wrong, that is if the mechanism is stuck or if the valve is malfunctioning, we would see a drop in the pressure side of the circuit despite the supply and circulating pumps functioning correctly. So, periodic checks are to be made through visual inspection and other ways onto the pressure control valve on the return line. It is also important that as earlier discussed, the quick closing valve is always under operational condition and it, it is a very important safety element that is being provided on the service side in case of isolation has to be done before exiting and flooding the engine room in case of fire emergency. Also, as we can see before closing that there is a small changeover valve present just after the service tank and before the inlet into the filters of the supply pump side and this changeover valve is the one responsible for changing over the fuel supply system from heavy oil to diesel oil. So whenever we are entering the Sika and Dika conditions that is the areas where the limitations on socks and knocks are placed so pertaining to socks we have to make sure that the fuel is of lesser sulfur content that is why this changeover valve is provided that in case if we have to change the vessel supply for fuel from VLSFO to diesel we will just do it through this valve. Now it can be through a automatic segment or it can be done manually by a simple changeover lever. I hope that this video has cleared your doubts pertaining to the fuel oil supply circuit and if any doubts still remain please feel free to drop them into the comment section and we would be happy to address them. Please make sure to like our videos and subscribe to our channel if you like the content that is being provided. Your support and your appreciation will help us to stay motivated and keep introducing more such engaging and helpful content further as well. Thank you so much.